Hi, this is Christophe Antoma from Pronifix, and in this demo I'm going to showcase uh, the further developments that we've done on our DITA Drupal Integration Toolkit. Uh, the first feature that I want to show to you is uh, the DITA Client and Documentation uh, Server uh, couple um, that we developed. Um, it's based on the principle that uh, Robert Douglas uh, demonstrated in his uh, uh, Documentation Injection um, module. And uh, basically what it does is that it, it adds uh, to all the form elements um, and later, like we haven't implemented it yet, later also um, the different nodes, um, uh, this links, these links that you can connect to a documentation uh, item, to a documentation node or, or um, topic in our case. Now instead of using <coughs> Instead of uh, doing this locally on the site itself, we've created a documentation server. And uh, the documentation client in our case is uh, nothing more than uh, a URL that points uh, to the documentation server. So that um, you can then on the documentation server link specific documentation topics to a certain forum element or later also node. Now in case that um, you're doing this uh, that was uh, for a node that already had a documentation concept, but for example, this one, uh, this form element, well, this one also has one, um, but this one doesn't have a result. <coughs> In that case, you can add uh, an existing one, just through a node reference, <coughs> or you can also add, uh, shit, yeah shows that one but you can also add them by creating new ones and that brings us to the next uh, part of uh, the next elements that I wanted to show which is a uh, poor man's data poor man's data is a concept that we developed uh, as an answer to um, basically uh, the lack of a proper editor um, in uh, Drupal for for XML now we've got plans for creating an editor, but in the meantime, um, we found this already be to be very useful um, because basically poor man's data creates um, uh, lets you create data topics using um, a normal CCK form, where you have a bunch of uh, the, the the most important fields um, for the topic uh, in the form, and then once you uh, go and save it, I'll go to an example already filled out. Um, so you see, it's already filled out. So when you go and save it, then it export, and then it will show your XML um, generated from from your answers, uh, from your uh, input. Um, we've done this for both tasks and concepts. The um, next in the list is the data topic upload function, where you can go and upload specific uh, individual files into the system. Um, this takes some time because it has to parse through the um, DTD and validate uh, the input. But once it's done, it shows you the XHTML version of, of the topic. But if you go and look at it, you see that actually that's uh, XML that's stored. Um, <clears throat> Next in row is the data folder import. And with the data folder import, you can import um, a folder uh, that is located somewhere in your Drupal install into the system. And basically, you can just say import, and it will go and create nine document nodes in this case. Um, the cool thing about this is that you could, for example, um, create a folder in which you're checking out um, a documentation repository and then import all those documentation files into uh, Drupal using the system. Um, and then when you go back and look at the overview, you see that those new files have been created. Um, now, <coughs> we got some feedback from people about um, the command line being visible <laughs> in the process. So we've, we've, um, we've further enhanced the system so that now you don't even need uh, to um, have users go into command line to go and find files um, or go and find exports and um, go and um, trigger the exports system from a, a Drush command. So as you can see here, we still have, we still have the usual user interface drag and drop interface for um, managing the data map. You can still use views, 
Now, what I wanted to show you also is how you can, for the people that don't know Drupal, is how you can build a few, uh, a few Squarey to get specific topics out. For example, this query, um, this Tita topics, you get all the uh, Tita documents and Tita tasks and concepts. Right. And uh, save. I'm going to ignore that error. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now we go into the interface, add views list, Tita topics. And as argument, you set all. Then you get all the topics. Uh, like there was actually an argument, so it should normally also work like this. Yep. Um, and then um, when you go and schedule this, so okay, we save. Important not to forget. Save. And then. Um, you have the data map view where you can now choose which of the vocabularies you want to use to create the relationship table. I do it without one for now. And you see the the data map view, and then you can export the data map. Um, now, what's new here is the zip and the tarball uh, that you can create <coughs> from um, the map and the topics that are being referenced in the map. So that's an easy way to export uh, topics and maps uh, out of the Drupal system. Um, so now I'm just going to generate a PDF export. Okay, now you see scheduled for conversion. So we're still working with uh, an asynchronous uh, creation of the uh, exports um, for scalability reasons. Um, but what we've done is that we've, um, we've it is now just possible to use a cron tab task to trigger the uh, export uh, so that um, you don't have to go into command line to do this um, to do the exports. So once cron has run then you, this, it will appear in this uh, list. We can look at an older uh, item. You can see that it's still generating still generating the files based on uh, on the map. And that's uh, and that's it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.